It took me two and a half years to save my first 100k. This is how I did it. This all began when I discovered the financial independence retire early movement. I just started a new job a few months earlier and this job was a 40% pay increase compared to my previous job. And even though it was just a few months earlier, lifestyle inflation started to creep in. I was spending more money because I was earning more money. But I knew the way to fire will be long and I needed to make some changes if I wanted to get there as quickly as possible. Back then, this was still my goal, to reach fire in my 30s. Now, I know there's more to life and to the FI movement than reaching FI as fast as possible. Nevertheless, I would start my FI journey the same way. Save aggressively, but not all the way to FI, only to the coast FI stage. There is something special when I hit the 100k milestone. This is kind of when I realized I can actually do this. I can reach FI. When it comes to saving money, it is very simple. Spend less or earn more. Ideally, you would be spending less while earning more. But earning more is a mid to long term play compared to spending less, which can be implemented immediately. In this video, we'll focus on three areas and nine things in total that are immediately implementable. Necessities to change, housing, food, transportation. This is usually where most people spend a lot of money. Habits to replace, conveniences, temptations, subscriptions, things to add, exercise, grocery delivery, fun budget, things to change. Housing. Housing is usually the single biggest expense in most people's lives. And therefore, any changes done in this area will have a huge impact on your savings rate. You can choose to move or share. Share housing with other people. Or if it's an acceptable option for you, live with your parents. I moved out once I got my first job after university. In hindsight, I should have stayed with my parents for one more year. But I was so into the idea of being independent, having my freedom, having room to develop, etc. It wasn't that life-changing, but the saved rent money would have been a very big deal. Move to a cheaper location or to a smaller place. Do you really need to live downtown? Do you need to live in this bougie neighborhood? Does it need to be this newly constructed apartment? Do you really need a second bedroom? If not, consider moving. After my first apartment, I only lived with flatmates because paying half the rent is just simply better. Every move, I was able to reduce my rent. At the end, I spent about 15% of my income on rent. Yes, moving comes at a cost. You might move away from a familiar surrounding, from friends and family, but it is one of the biggest lever that you can pull in terms of savings. Take action. Set up a search notification for more affordable flats or look for a flatmate. Food. Learn how to cook the meals you like to eat and then meal prep them. Being able to cook is such a valuable skill to have. It's better for your health. You save money by not relying on ready-made meals, takeouts or frozen dinners. Every now and then either one of them is perfectly fine. But if you get into the habit of meal prepping every week, this will make a huge difference not only to your savings but also to your health. Take action. Use ChatGPT to create a meal plan for you. Type into ChatGPT. Can you create a weekly meal plan for me? I want meals that are easy to prepare and that can be stored in the fridge or freezer for meal preparation purposes. I like Mediterranean, Mexican and Thai cuisine. I don't eat seafood. I want you to propose five meals and to create a shopping list for me. It is this simple. Now all you have to do is buy the ingredients and start meal prepping. If you need some inspiration, watch Ethan. Watch Ethan. He has a great video about how to meal prep if you are lazy. Transportation. Get rid of your car. In 2022, according to the AAA, the average yearly cost to own and operate a new vehicle in the US is over $10,000. This is a big chunk out of your income. I have personally never owned a car. I was very tempted many times, but I simply couldn't justify it because it was just too expensive. Admittingly, I have always had alternatives to the car. I know, especially in North America, this might not be the case. In that case, consider getting a cheaper used car that is more economical to run, like a Toyota Corolla or a Honda Civic, not the Type R. If you use public transportation, I used to only take the public transport during the colder months of the year. The rest, I biked 30 minutes one way to work. It's good exercise and I saved half a year worth of ticket fare. 
Convenience. It's 7 p.m., you're hungry, you open the fridge, there's nothing ready to eat. There are only ingredients. So I open the app on my phone and order food or go out to eat. Conveniences usually will end up costing you more. The big selling point of convenience is that it saves you time, but it's just not that true. Going out to eat or picking up food yourself does not save you time. Getting food delivered will cost you money and that is the same money that you traded your time for. How is it that you save money with this? There are only very few situations where I think regular convenience is worth it. One of which we will get to later in this video. Take action. Here's how you save money. Replace convenience with planning. If you have a routine, most people do, you have to do the planning only once. And simply adjust a bit here and then when you divert from your routine. Avoid eating out or ordering food by meal prepping as discussed earlier. Prepare your breakfast, lunch, coffee at home and take it with you. All of this requires a bit of effort in the beginning, but soon it will become second nature. It will save you a lot of money in the long run. Temptations. No one can resist temptations forever. Companies have enormous budgets and talented people that will get you to cave in eventually. Social media companies. Companies where you are a member, Amazon, Costco, etc. Company newsletters are marketing funnels that use data they have on you, target and tempt you with personalized ads. It is almost impossible to win against them long term. Take action. The only way is to remove these temptations completely. And if you need to get your fix of novelty or shiny objects, sign up for newsletters like Morning Brew, Economist, or anything where the ads are not personalized and targeted at you. It is much easier to ignore ads if they're not based on your search history. Subscription. Subscriptions like Netflix, Hulu, Spotify, etc. are sneaky. They are silent vampires that suck money from your wallet. From a psychological point, this is incredibly clever. If you want to cancel, you need to take action. Because humans are generally lazy, it takes so much more effort to cancel the subscription compared to just let it run. And at some point, you're getting so used to the deductions every month that the will to cancel will get smaller and smaller. Take action. Unsubscribe from all newsletters. Cancel all memberships of places that sell things. Cancel all but one subscription. Pick one and only one and switch that subscription if you no longer need it. Things to add. Exercise. Take care of your health. Hospital visits and medications are expensive. Also, if you're not feeling well, you're also not working towards your goal. To truly illustrate how important exercise is, Along with the food you put in your body, there's nothing with a greater impact on your health. And the best thing is, it does not have to be expensive. You don't need to have a gym membership or join fancy classes. There are tons of ways to be active without spending much money. Go on a hike, go for a walk, go for a run. But my all-time favorite way to exercise is doing bodyweight exercises in the comfort of my own home. Doing bodyweight exercises is fantastic because you need no or minimal equipment. You can get fancy if you want and get some dumbbells, yoga blocks, pull-up bars. I have none of them. I have a yoga mat, some elastic bands and a TRX. The time you spend exercising is time that you cannot feel bored. When you are not bored, you have no time to miss your subscription or expose yourself to temptations. If you are sore from exercising, you are also less likely to go out and spend money. Exercise is great for your health, saves you money in the long run and prevents you from spending money in the short run. Win, win, win. Take actions. Replace or find an exercise routine that you like and that will not cost you much to start and to perform. Fun budget. Consistency is very, very difficult, especially if the alternative is so much more fun. Saving rigorously or being frugal isn't fun for most people. So allow yourself a small dopamine kick every now and then. Budget for a reasonable, emphasis on reasonable cheat day. Reaching fi is a long game. Just like most diets, if you don't stick to it long term, you will ultimately revert to your old eating habits slash spending habits. The only diet I was ever able to stick to long term was Tim Ferriss' low carb diet. <coughs> that is because of the once a week cheat day. So transferring this mindset to the goal of saving 100k 
allowing yourself a fun budget that you can use for whatever you like. I planned up to 5% of my monthly income for discretional spending. 5% is not a lot, but it will bring you joy and help you immensely to adhere to your goals. Of course, it will get much faster if you wouldn't spend it. Take actions. Allow yourself some fun within your predetermined allowance. Grocery delivery. I know I said remove conveniences, but there's one exception I only recently started to include in my life. Grocery deliveries. I usually order bulky, heavy and standardized items that I regularly use using delivery services. For example, toilet paper, flour, dry beans, vinegar, oil, soy sauce, etc. I order this about once a month, sometimes twice a month. This replaces my shopping trip of that week. Every trip to and back, including the time I need to shop, usually takes me two hours for a weekly shop. And then I also have to pay for public transportation to get me there and I have to carry all the groceries back home. This is time and effort I can spend otherwise, especially considering that delivery is most of the time free above a certain threshold. I will also avoid all the temptations on display in the store, especially since I can store and reuse my virtual shopping cart. Take action. Create a standard shopping cart of groceries that you can use regularly. Order it online every other week or once a month. Here's a recap. Housing. Set up notifications for affordable housing or seek a flatmate. Cooking. Use ChatGPT for personalized meal planning and shopping lists. Transport. Consider public transport, biking or go for economically used vehicle. Convenience. Embrace planning and routine to replace convenience and save money. Temptations. Unsubscribe from non-essential newsletters, cancel unused memberships and retain only one vital subscription. Add exercise. Find and stick to cost-effective exercise routine. Fun budget. Allocate a reasonable amount for a fun budget. Grocery deliveries. Create a standard online grocery list for regular bulk orders. I hope you can take away something from this video. A final message. I said it took me about two and a half years to reach 100k. Which is true, but it isn't important how long it took. What is important is that you got there by learning how to lower your expenses and save money. These skills will stay with you for life. I can toggle it on and off whenever I need to. I'm no longer worried when I lose my job or economic situations are getting worse because I know how to lower my living expenses and just stick it out until it gets better. Think of it as going into hibernation and wait for spring. Thank you for watching and see you next time.